what we need to do is mix the putty with the accelerator. <clears throat> there are no lines on it. Should have a nice deep pink color. If we don't put enough accelerator in it, it will set very slowly, so it's important to put enough, especially if we're in a hurry. It's not going to affect the properties, it's just going to affect the setting. There's no lines on it, and we make a little bit of a worm shape, and then we place it on the labial surface, and then just cover the incisal area. Just like that. And then we let it set. Okay, now that the body set, be careful to remove it so we don't break anything. So just loosen it up. Sometimes you may have to the patterns down and we'll remove it. So now what we need to do is cut the putty exactly on the incisal edges. Not necessary on the uh, molars. But once we get to Second premolar, go inside and cut it right to the incisal edge. Same thing with the rest of the So now all we have. the facial surfaces to the incisal edge and that's what will tell us where the incisal edge is to be. So as we put it back, it should fit on there exactly, without any gaps or inconsistencies. So to cut back, we're going to use a tool like this. Some, it could be anything, but it should have a rounded tip, like such. This one happens to have a small one and a larger one. This I made myself, and you can do the same thing if you have a broken instrument. All it is is a little bit of a grinding stone or a disc and you polish it up with a white rubber wheel and you have yourself an instrument. So now what we have to do, the first thing we're going to cut back are the interproximals. Which is why we needed it, needed to put the attachment back further. This 
see. Now we're gonna cut it back here all the way down to the attachment to give us space for the porcelain. So I'm gonna start right here. And let's do it with the small one. Now this is a very hard wax so sometimes you may want to heat it up a little bit. Like so. Let's go right in there. And then before it cools down completely and just kind of dig it out right along the line angle just make sure you do not start digging at the other tooth right next to it so if we look at it from the occlusal now we'll see a missing piece right from here what it should look like from the top. Next, we're gonna go and do the distal. Distal portion of the central and the mesial portion of the lateral. So, we're just gonna go right in here. We're gonna soften it up a little bit. And this time we're going to use the larger part of the instrument since we're doing two teeth at once. Just like that. Now we have the interproximals of the lateral and the central. Next we move on to the canine and the lateral. Again, we use the larger instrument and we're gonna dig out the mesial line angle of the canine and the distal line angle of the lateral. So, this is what we want to see from the occlusal surface. of the canine and the mesial of the premolar. Okay, and we soften it up. And then we dig it out. Mm. We can do just enough, we don't have to go all the way down to the attachment if we don't want to. <clears throat> but since we softened up the wax, now the wax joined together, so we got to be careful when we remove this and we have to cut the wax here so that we can remove one side. But before we do that, we're going to take a look at it again. You see the trough we made here? It should be just like this. Like a little tunnel right between there. 
same as here and same as here and same as here so now when we put back this we should be able to see how much we took away but first we have to cut this index again we need to cut it to remove the incisal edges up to about the incisal third right here and right here and right here so since we're gonna be cutting back probably to the second premolar right there let's Uh, you know, the first premolar, not the second one. Yeah. Are we gonna do that too anyway? Let's do let's do all of them. Let's do all of all two 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 premolars. So we're gonna first cut down, and we're going to dovetail this. so that we can remove it and return it when we need to so right now we're gonna cut off the incisor of third of all of them up to the central so this way, you can see the dovetail, it goes in this way and it goes in this way, just like that. This allows us to put the other one back in place when we're ready to cut the incisal edge of the wax ups. But right now we need this so that we can see the facial surface so we can see here how much we removed we can see the spaces right there right there right there and right there and see, didn't, since we didn't see anything we didn't cut anything from the labial surface there is no space yet there so now we're going to move on and work on the incisal edges again I'm going to soften it a little bit this way we don't have to worry about cutting away the adjacent model because since the wax is very soft we don't have to press very hard with the instrument removing the incisal edge from the interproximal areas Incidentally, the noise in the background is a porcelain oven going. So, the next step we're going to do is we're going to remove from the incisal edges about 
a millimeter, millimeter and a half. this to cut it a little faster. Now we're going to do the lateral. And then the canine. Then the premolar. We forgot to do this one, so let's do the interproximals between these two premolars. Then we're going to do the second premolar only. So on this one, let's not melt the molar. We'll use the smaller excavator and take away just the distal of the premolar. We're not going to touch the molar. And we're gonna take some of the cusp tip away. As, just as we did here. Okay, so now we have a reduction in height. We have a reduction in the interproximal, and now we're going to reduce the gingival. Here I'm not going to use heat because I don't want to distort the marginal areas. I'm just going to very slowly take away from the gingival area. Now here we'll, we're taking away as a cutback to room for porcelain, but we're still doing it in a very planned way. We're not just starting to hack away at it. Now you don't want to go too thin with the margin here because you don't want to break the wax.
the same in the Pantic. Okay, so now we have the ginger rolls, the interproximals, and we have the incisals and occlusals. So the next thing we're going to take away is the buckles. Now the buckles, what I like to do is first I like to take away from the very surface of them a line and this line should be at the depth where you want to be and you want to go all of them should have a nice line in the middle at the depth where you want to be so if you want to take away a millimeter then you're going to go a millimeter deep and we're going to do, do it to each tooth So now we have the vertical lines carved. So now we're going to do a couple of horizontal lines this way. The same depth as we did with the vertical ones. This will give us a gauge on how deep we're going when we're cutting back the rest of the tooth. This is most important on the labial surfaces. <clears throat> so now we have our little gauge cuts right there. So we're going to take the rest of it off using the larger of your instruments. And you're going to cut it down to the depth where you put your gauge cuts in. Okay, so once we cut it down, we're going to flatten the surface. So now here we see a light spot, which is probably the dipping wax. 
and it could be the the die itself too so we want to make sure we don't go thinner than that in the, in that area so here we're gonna just do a little bit of smoothing with the wax spatula deeper and you don't want to leave these areas sharp you want to round them a little bit one because you need <coughs> space for porcelain two because the porcelain doesn't really like sharp angles so when it shrinks sometimes it cracks and number three you want the light to be able to go through this area to create a more natural appearance So what now we're gonna do is we're going to double check, see how much we took off and is it enough. So we're gonna put the matrix back and check to see how much we took away. And you can tell here that we need to take away a bit more because there's not a lot of space there. <coughs> Now without cutting away the incisal, you would not be able to tell very well. Now when we take this off the model, we're going to measure this area and see if it's actually thin or if it's just the dipping wax. But we're going to move on and keep cutting back. that those little gauge cuts it is much easier for us to uh, know how much to cut back from the incisal just remember if you see the wax getting lighter that means it's getting thinner so you gotta stop cutting back at that point smooth it a little and around the corners and then move on to the next two
see here I left <coughs> still a little bit so we gotta keep going back the matrix and see how we did. So if we look at the matrix, we did pretty well. Here we have enough. Here we need more space. Looks like the uh, anteriors we're gonna need more space. So what we're going to do is we're going to thin it out as much as we can possibly thin it out and we're going to stop there. And then when we build up the porcelain we may need to build it out slightly. So we're going to adjust these spaces a little bit and maybe a little bit here on the line angles. Looks like we did pretty well with the interproximal spaces. We were able to remove enough here to be able to place the porcelain so that we can actually separate them and make them look like separate teeth. Now we're going to look at the incisal edges. So. put back the uh, dovetailed incisal and we're gonna look at it. So now we have a pretty good amount of space there. We still need to improve on the premolars and uh, looks like the canine also. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna take this off. So we're going to shorten the canine more. And maybe we'll uh, tilt it in a little more. To make sure that we don't get any bright spots later. bright spots would occur if you didn't take away enough of the incisal edge and then the porcelain would be close to the metal in those spots. Wherever the porcelain is close to the metal you're gonna get a bright spot because the opaque will show through. So we're gonna do the same with the centrals and the laterals. We're gonna tilt them in slightly and we're going to round the line angles a little more to give us a little extra space for the porcelain.
you see it's a little bit thin in these areas or it's a little bit too much um, dipping wax showing through which is not a big deal it's better if we have dipping wax showing through than if it's too thin but we will decide that later the important thing for now is that we know how to cut back I'm still adjusting the areas okay so now we have to decide where to put the finish line on the lingual so the finish line on the lingual first we have to establish where the contacts are so if we see the contact is here in this area there's a slight contact with the lateral incisor on the lower right here and there's a contact with the lower incisor here so what we have to do is we must place the finish line above that contact which on this two would be right here if we put the contact beyond the tooth it would be okay but then we have to bulk out the lingual surface and we cannot do that here because the adjacent tooth is more forward and we already cannot put a concavity in there so if we bulk this out the patient may complain that they feel bulky there so what I would rather do is put the finish line right before the occlusal contact on the lingual same thing here we have the contact about here so as long as we put it above this we'll be okay so we're gonna draw the finish line right there on the canine we're going to put it below the contact because we have to make sure that this porcelain doesn't get an occlusal contact on the junction between the metal and the porcelain because that might create a fracture so on the canine we're going to go around the attachment and we're going to put the finish line lingual to the contact area and then the two li finish lines are going to meet right here this we can lingualize a little more if we need to now it's the same thing on the Premolars. The premolars, you also need to put the porcelain right before the contact, occlusal contact. So for them, we're going to stay right about the buckle third of the tooth, looking at it occlusally maybe or the buckle quarter so once we know where our finish lines will be then we're going to remove some wax from there exactly to that finish line
and after we cast it we can refine it even more. The lingual finish lines should go seamlessly into the interproximal finish lines. Now during cutback, <coughs> you may not, you may or may not break the wax up. If you do, it's no big deal. You just basically heat up the interproximal areas and fuse the wax together. I broke the wax up on both of them it kind of fell off so it's okay we're just going to put it back on and fuse it together but since this is an attachment we're going to separate them first then we're going to put this back Make sure all the dies are completely down and then we're going to seal the interproximal just like that. So now we're gonna put in the premolar. And that also has to be 100% down. So the attachment has to seat all the way. If this doesn't go down, just lift it up a little bit and kind of push them down at the same time. So now we will fuse the premolar pontic. Remember, after you fused anything, it needs to be, it needs to stand overnight, so the wax can work its. Uh, stresses out. This way it won't distort. If you take it off right away, sometimes the wax can distort just during 
you putting it on the sprue former especially with big bridges like this you should after you join everything let it sit also you when you let it sit overnight you want to remove anything that touches the wax up so remove the adjacent teeth remove the pontex so it's just the just the dies are in the base and make sure everything's down you seal the margins you join the pontex you join everything and then you let it sit Now sometimes you don't have time to do that and in that case it is what it is you just try to be as careful as you can Obviously we can't check this right now on the articulator because the attachment is too high. We're gonna cut it down later and adjust the occlusion. The occlusion should be completed before you put in the attachment. Double check, make sure. See if we need to take away anything else. Yes, the canine. We have to do the canine a little bit more. Right on the distal line angle. Need to remove some more. Smooth it out a little. 